All right, we're here with wide receiver coach Joe Cox. Joe, first of all, just kind of take us back to um, uh, back to the spring, really, I guess, when, when Coach Muschamp and Coach Bo uh, Bobo were kind of uh, talking to you about coming here and how that conversation went. Yeah, so obviously, you know, coaching with Coach Bobo for a while, there was a, a good connection there and kind of getting an opportunity to come here and uh, was really fortunate, um, you know, definitely glad to come back to this side of the country and kind of be back closer to, to where I'm from and around family. Um, but was really looking forward to whatever role could possibly become available. And uh, when I started off, I thought it was going to be tight ends. And uh, I had a meeting with my tight ends that night on Zoom and woke up the next morning and was coaching receivers. So uh, it was a little bit of a crazy experience there for the first couple months because we were moving. Then all of a sudden, you know, coronavirus, you know, everything started and uh, started to be a little bit of a, a crazy situation. But uh, just thankful to be, you know, in a place that's playing football that, uh, you know, has a, has a lot of great leadership, a lot of good people on staff that are, you know, doing it the right way to, to win football games. And I'm glad I'm here. Uh, you talk a little bit about just come back to this part of the country mm -hmm. just for your family and stuff. Yeah. How exciting was it for for your parents all yeah, that to know that you were back huge. in the I mean, I have a two-year-old girl, and um, for my family and my wife's family, everybody's already been able to see us and see you know a grandchild uh, more in eight months than they than they had the last five years. So that was uh, that was really exciting to to just get back to some familiarity, you know, with an area. Uh, definitely, you know, got used to some some different climate in Colorado, uh, no humidity. So that was, you know, a good welcome back to me coming back to the South. But uh, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. One of the attractions, obviously, is continuing to work for Coach Bobo. What yep. is, is it about him and your relationship with him that, that makes you want to continue to work for a guy like that? But as a player, um, you know, he's one of those guys that early on, uh, you, you kind of want to run away from the building at the end of each day because he's, he's tough on you and he, he demands a lot out of you. but. You know, just it's, it's something that I learned playing for him was that there's only one way to do things, and that's trying to be the best you can be and that you get better or worse every day. And that's as a player, that's as a coach, whatever you do in life. And um, he ended up being a person that, you know, kind of I emulated and wanted to uh, be like in the coaching profession um, and was lucky enough to have an opportunity to go do it with him at Colorado State. And I've said it from the get-go, I mean, it doesn't matter – where he was, if there was an opportunity for me there, especially as a young coach kind of getting into it, I want to be part of any program that, that, that he's involved with. So, again, uh, it was a great, you know, deal being able to do it with him out in Colorado, but to, to come here, uh, you know, to this conference and, and have an opportunity, uh, a lot of that, I mean, I owe to him. Um, and I'm just really fortunate to still be able to, to continue to work with him. When a Coach Bobo offense is, is really clicking, I mean, what, what does it look like? Uh, it, and does it, or does he adapt to whatever who, talent I was about he has? To say, who team? knows? I mean, he's kind of done a little bit of everything, depending on who's on his team. Um, you know, he's had good offenses where a fullback and a tight end, at least one tight end, was in the game every single play. He's he's had good offenses that were spread with four wide receivers on the field. So a lot of that just depends on who we feel like our playmakers are, and uh, you know, kind of what we can handle offensively, what we're good at, and. You know, we, we have a ton of stuff in, and at times I think that's a huge challenge to the kids to have to learn it and think like, man, this is what we're going to be running this year, like all these plays. But it's really to find what we're good at and what kind of hits their brain and, and what they can grab onto and, and kind of run with and start understanding some of the concepts. So as we start narrowing down who we're playing with, what personnel we're going to be playing in, what we need to be as an offense, they've heard it before. And we can kind of go back and, and hit it again and, and make sure that we it's something that we can really get a hold of, knowing that that's going to be kind of what we major in. You mentioned playmakers, and Shia Smith is a guy around here who's, who's made a lot of plays yep. for the Gamecocks. Um, what have you seen from him and, and your thoughts on Shia? He's, uh, he's had a pretty good camp, and obviously he, he does have some big playability. Um, he's one of the guys that can kind of score from anywhere or make a big play from anywhere on the field. And, uh, you know, I've challenged him a lot this camp, um, really just understanding that is it's his time. And, um, you know, he's always had somebody with him. He's always had a Debo. He's always had a Brian Edwards. You know, unbelievable players where he could make a big play, but maybe he wasn't the guy they were counting on to make every big play. And, uh, you know, hey, you are the Debo. You are the Brian. Now you got to prove it to your teammates. you got to prove it to us every single day. Uh, and he's answered that challenge pretty good. And, you know, I've been excited to see, you know, what he can be for our offense. And, you know, he's going to have to know a lot and uh, kind of be the guy that gets the most out of that whole group.
Another guy that's made a lot of big plays in camp and a little bit of a surprise is, is Jalen Brooks. Mm -hmm. Obviously, still uncertain whether he's going right. to be even eligible or not. But how do you, how do you kind of work him in, not knowing that at this time? And, and what have you seen from Jalen? I mean, and we're, we're we're hoping everything goes through. That's obviously uh, a big thing that we're waiting on. But Jalen's one of the guys that, for the amount of time that he's been here, he has as good of a grasp of what we're doing as anybody in our room. You know that we've been and we've been talking about this stuff since February. Uh, so really, really sharp kid, uh, brings some length to the room, has good speed, and uh, he's somebody that just because of how he practices and, you know, kind of his knowledge of every single thing that we're trying to do is a huge asset for him getting on the field and, and being a playmaker. And, you know, the first, first day he came out there with some fresh legs and, and made some big plays, and he had a good scrimmage this past weekend. So I'm really excited to see w what he can do, just adding another guy you know, that teams are going to have to account for and that we can kind of game plan around. Another guy who had a big scrimmage on Saturday was on Joyner. Mm -hmm. He just continues, I guess, to, to progress as he mm -hmm. as he learns the role. He hasn't yep. played wide receiver a whole lot. What, right. what are you working specifically with him on? Uh, you know, obviously for somebody that played, I mean, he's a, he's a natural athlete, but for somebody that's always played the quarterback position, a lot of times people think that's an easy transition, uh, but it's not. You know, there's a lot of things that, that he's still continuing to learn in terms, of, in terms of receiver play and what he has to do to get open and how he has to create space and route running and savvy. And a lot of that's feel that comes with just time of playing that, that position. And uh, he's done a good job. He's a tough kid. He's tough with the ball in his hands. And uh, he did have a good scrimmage. And that was one thing that I talked about with him last week was, hey, this is, this is kind of your opportunity right here. You know, we want to see what you can do when the ball's in your hands. And, you know, can you get open? Can you make plays with your hands away from your body in contested catch situations? And he, he did a pretty good job with that. So he's a guy that, you know, I think the more confidence he gets playing the position and making plays in those situations, that he's going to be, you know, a guy that keeps coming along and keeps coming along where he's going to be a guy that we can, can really count on. Another guy who's, who's played a lot of quarterback and obviously mm -hmm. came here as a quarterback, but now getting a look at wide receivers, Luke Doty. Yep. Uh, just tell us how you're able to, to incorporate him into that wide receiver group. So Luke is one of the most impressive young men I've ever been around because Luke has to, to deal with Coach Bobo's meetings and my meetings. And thinking back to, you know, being a, a, a first-year player in an offense where there's so much going on, it's been crazy how how well he's been able to comprehend things and he's got a great attitude he's a huge leader on our football team especially with you see it all those younger guys that's like he's the guy in that class they all gravitate to him they know he's going to be doing things the right way and it shows you know he takes notes in meetings he practices the right way he does everything he's supposed to do and he's going to be a guy that's pulling along a lot of young guys for a very long time and uh my, my hat's kind of been off to him this whole fall camp with, you know, everything that he's had to learn, you know, playing all kinds of spots. And uh, I couldn't imagine doing it. I mean, I, there's there's no way. And there, there's been a couple of days where I think his head's been spinning pretty good too, where he might have forgot just how to play football. But uh, he's actually made some plays. And, you know, I think it's, I, I think regardless, it's all going to, really benefit him for both positions, you know, kind of doing what we've had him do this fall camp. You mentioned uh, bringing along some of the younger guys. T talk about some of those younger guys and what you see, and, and are they able, do you think they'll be able to contribute right away, or are they a little bit more projects down the road? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the crazy thing is just the, the climate we're in with everything, with what we're dealing with, uh, there, there's no one that's a down the road guy. You know, you, you never know what could happen where somebody's going to have to step in and have to be a contributor. And that's something that I think Coach Muschamp's done a really good job getting our whole team to understand is there's, you know, no one's expecting a red shirt. No one's expecting to, you know, not make a trip. No one's expecting, you know, to be a cert in a certain place on the depth chart because that could change in an instant. Uh, and I think that we've had two young receivers that have done a really, really good job so far um, in Rico Powers and Jakari Caldwell that kind of just keep coming along. You know, Kari, you know, first couple of days of camp, uh, I was I was on him pretty hard and, and he just kind of looked like he had a look in his eye like he didn't know what we were doing. And then he comes into the scrimmage this past week, makes a game winning touchdown catch in a one minute drill and uh, actually had two touchdowns in the, in the scrimmage. And um, he's kind of learning how to play a little bit as a different type receiver in this offense. He's a big guy, he's got to play big. Uh, which is a lot different than how Shy plays. 
you know, and I think everybody coming in, especially as a young receiver, getting used to the physicality of the DBs that you're going to be playing against, the speed of the DBs, how many different coverage looks you have, it's a lot coming at them. And I think both those guys have practiced the right way and put themselves in a pretty good position uh, to be able to, you know, possibly make, make some contributions. And I mean, I told everybody that, you know, we're going to have to count on everybody this year. Another young guy was Mike Wyman. You know, Mike's, Mike's done a good job. He missed a little bit of time, but he's been, he's, he's been uh, uh, kind of the workaholic guy in the group. Uh, but all those guys just need to continue to, to keep learning and keep trying to put themselves in a spot where we can call their number and we're not scared to do that. And the last, the last question I have for you is, is Xavier Leggett, a mm -hmm. uh, guy who got his feet wet last year yep. and showed some flashes. Of, could he be that next guy in the long line of great receivers we've had here? I think so. And you know what I've challenged him about is it's you know he's still a, a raw receiver. Um, you know, being a guy that you know obviously he's really athletic. I know he played some last year, but he has some quarterback background too. There's a lot of things that he needs to continue to learn that would really, really help his game. And uh, he has unbelievable work ethic. Uh, he's a tough guy. Uh, he has speed. He has strength. And he is a guy that not only do I think he has a chance to be one of those guys, but we need him to be one of those guys. And, I, and he's probably been one of the guys I've challenged the most in the room because he has to play with a different mentality than everybody else out there. He kind of, with his frame and what we're asking him to do, he has to be the guy that's going to play against a lot of teams' best DBs. He's going to play against most guys, you know, most physical DB. And uh, he's got to be the guy that can make contested catches, make plays to keep moving the chains, and make big plays too. So he's kind of being asked to do a lot of different things, and he's he's done a good job kind of rising to that challenge so far. But, you know, by no means, I think everybody in our group, we just had a good talk. I mean, we, we, we got to be on a mission, you know, this year because it's a little bit different than what it's been, obviously, with just everything that's going on. But, you know, there has been a, a guy that's a no doubt about it, NFL player, you know, that's that's not we, we, we don't have that guy right now, you know, and everybody's going to have to get their number called. Everybody's going to have to make the plays that come their way. And, uh, you know, Shai Smith, he has to be the guy that leads the way because this is, this is his chance and Xavier's chance too. Appreciate it, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. All right.